What's up, Sim Race? This is Larry TJR Sim here, and today I want to go over the Sim Magic Alpha Ultimate wheelbase and the GT Neo. Just my first uh, first impressions. That is uh, between these, as far as uh, you hopefully you've already seen the unboxing that showed all showed everything off uh, as I was unboxing it. I was actually pretty pretty excited about what I was seeing coming out of the box. You know, you see other reviews on online and you're like, hmm, that looks pretty cool. It looks big, you know, and it's actually much, much smaller uh, than it than it really is in person. So in person, rather, you know, it's only like 12 inches long here. So <laughs> that's what she said. But it's uh, pretty damn cool, man. I love this system. I, I got to say, all in all, this is a really nice system. Now, if that's all you want to take from the review, cool. It's a nice system. Go buy one. Use the affiliate links below. But if you want to stick around for some more, let's get started. Alrighty, so you decided to stick around. Okay, Good. so first impressions here. It was a uh, fit function of this unit is, is top notch. It looks expensive. <laughs> it looks really good, very high quality. It's uh, not quite what I'm used to for the dollar price point. Uh, I was really impressed of all the LEDs. I love how the LEDs have come along from a long time ago. Uh, as far as implementing them into the rig and being able to see things, especially if you're someone that likes to uh, drive lower lights and at nighttime, because I have these bezel kits here, as you can see on the sides, and it's kind of reflective during the day, right? But at night, psh, disappears, looks great, a lot more immersive. You know, obviously, if you use VR, you don't need bezel kits, right? But uh, this is something else that just flashes up in your in your eyes, and, and you, of course, control the settings of this, how everything and stuff looks on here. But uh, just the first impressions of it is it's a nice quality of, of a build, right? Very sturdy construction, all metal construction here. Looks like he has some threaded holes up here in the front where you can see where I'm pointing my fingers to where you could probably put a, a DDU later, uh, which I did see on their on their on uh, one of their little uh, YouTube videos that that's coming. So that's exciting to see. Instead of buying it within the wheel, which they have a really cool FX Pro wheel that has the display in it, which I almost got that myself, but... I thought it was better warrant, uh, better idea to buy something that was some a wheel that someone would buy when they're getting into this ecosystem, right? So that's what I went with. I went with the uh, GT Neo. It, price point is really good, one hundred dollars for this, two thirty nine or something like that. I think wheel base is like nine ninety nine. If you buy it as a bundle package like Apex Sim Racing, you get a little bit of money knocked off when you buy these two together. Uh, which you know, obviously check out the link tree description there for all your uh, all of my affiliate links if you're interested in buying any of these products check them out uh, some of them i have some discount codes as well on them if you don't use my affiliate links use another youtuber's affiliate links so they can get some kickback and help their channel grow as well i'm a smaller growing channel so if you want to use mine sweet if not cool still stay tuned so aesthetically very good Comes with all the hardware, comes with e-stop, which we can't see in the picture. It's right down here. Uh, let me see if I can get that in the camera right there. Comes with e-stop here. I have it mounted up already, which is nice. I like that feature. And also I like the ability to use it because some games I've noticed now, some games, particularly like Forza, right? You know, Sim cave type games is sometimes when you pause the menu or it's or you finish a race and stuff it gets caught in this little mode where the wheel will be like has tension on it right and i'm sure everybody's experienced this has been sim racing for a long time but i have a little tension it's every so often but i can just punch that that e-stop stop button and it takes all the tension off of it then i can undo it and and then everything's back to normal again so pretty pretty cool i like that feature just off the fly in the past when that would happen i would be holding this wheel right because it may be fairly strong going on at that time say with like my AccuForce I'd be holding this wheel uh, to keep it from going and then backing out of the menus back all the way back out to the main menu to where it would I guess release the code to the wheel and then this would get loosened up or I'd hurry up and just hold it and try to continue to the next race and then when the race come on then it would recenter and be fine right but I don't have to mess with that so that's a neat little observation for the first impressions I like that I also said uh, size wise just to cover that real quick uh, I was saying, you know, it's a good 12 inches, 12 inches long, but this is actually 12.83 inches by 5433, right? So you know, where, what, 12.83 inches long. Yeah, it's not that long, right? It's, it's not that uh, that big. It's quite heavy, though. It's 23 pounds for this. It's 10.5 kgs for my 
European friends, but it's a hefty girl. It's so nice, compact, very dense. You feel like you're picking up something quality in nature, right? There's no plasticky extra stuff around the wheelbase and stuff like say the Logitech or, or the new Turtle Beach and this extra foo-foo stuff, right? Which and they're right. They look good too, right? But I like this industrial look myself. Now, it already came with the stickers. Like I mentioned in the unboxing, what I've noticed in, in forums and stuff is usually the upgraded versions already has a sticker slapped on it for a, maybe the indication that you got from a V1 to a V2 brand. Uh, V2 between the version 1 has changed in size a little bit. This is actually a V3 like I showed in my unboxing. The, the sticker on the back of it. So as far as dimensions go, it's the same as the V2. What they updated with V3, don't know. They don't really publicize what it is, but I'm sure they're just continually upgrading their products, right? Uh, GT Neo, you know, first impression of this is the best damn looking wheel I've seen on the market for this low price point that they have of it. So sub $200 wheel. It looks better actually than my, my cube racing wheel, my GT Pro cube racing wheel which is a lot more expensive three times the cost of it when i bought it back in the day on sale uh nowadays are they're a little bit more from the uh from the price increase of the world <laughs> but it's uh for this price point it is done very well uh, i like all the buttons on it as you can see here in the camera they're very uh tactile right Let's see if you can hear them from the camera here or right, here's the mic very tactile it's got the uh seven way encoders uh, we used to call them funky switches back in the Fanatic days, but yeah, they do a great job uh, as far as uh, line settings and st stuff as well. Has of course a sticker kit, and you can put whatever sticker kits you want. I usually pick more of my favorite games like AMS2, Automobilist2, that is, and kind of follow suit with that. I could use some more options. There wasn't a sticker kit for for brake bias, but I had one on my Cube Cube Racing one. Here's the focus. So a big deal, but brake bias there. So I stuck that one on there. MGU, I stuck on there too. I didn't have it from from uh, the Sim Magic, but I had it in the in the box from my cube racing one. So a little mix and match here going on, but it doesn't matter. But you got page sticker and then the, all the other various ones. I got a high bright uh, headlights, uh, windshield wipers, pit DRS, curves, and then just directionals, power ignition. So I usually start my car. And, uh, and then start the car and then mapping here uh, engine braking tc abs actually also uh just why i just have this and i've only had it for a week now uh and i've been playing every day for several hours including the weekends but uh the well so we just had a hurricane that came through so i was down for a couple days but but no power however uh i was gonna say I lost my train of thought now like i said i would like to have a a little bit more expansive sticker kit so I could apply all the magic styling on here instead of having a mixed style. Now, as you see how easy it snaps on, it goes through the little running lights here. It's beautifully done. I have some B-roll here to show you as well, maybe a little bit better close up, but I love how that looks. Now, what I was gonna say is the update that since I just had this, I had an update to this wheel to where you can hold this, this funky switch button down, turn your dial to the right for these top two here, and you'll see now that it's doing what SimPro was doing, where you have the identification of, of, of it going through the wheel, right? So you could you could theoretically label this one, two, three, four, five, right? And uh, follow along uh, with it. Now, I don't really, I think that's really freaking cool, actually. Now you can do it with the bottom two as well, but that only works if you're using the MagLink. So just a new update. If you're using the MagLink, you can do the setting for the bottom two. If you're not using the MagLink, that part doesn't work for whatever reason. Maybe they're going to update that later on in the in the future. I don't know. But that was interesting to know. I was wondering, like, why couldn't you do it without the MagLink, right? So get that back into, into focus here, into play. I didn't really get it quite back, did I? All righty. There we go. All right. So, but that's pretty cool. Now, I did notice a little, little time when I had this activated. When I had this activated and I was playing some games, just first impressions during the first week is that it interfered with setting my I was using my brake bias for this one and some other feature here I was using for this one but it wasn't recognizing what I was trying to set in game when this was activated so it's got a few little bugs to work out I think but as soon as I turned it off which is clicking this button in turning it to the left oh it didn't do it click it in turn to the left there it goes that went off do this one here now it's off. When I turned it off and then went back and, and tried to uh, apply these, uh, edit the assignments of these buttons, it worked fine. So it has a little bit of interference with it. 
I wonder if it has something to do with the top half of the of it and the bottom half. You know, like Link's control the bottom half. I don't know. But uh, that was just an observation I saw. So more things about this as far as the software goes. Now build quality out of the way, top notch, highly love it. The QR system on here, obviously very robust. This is an NRG style Q QR system. I love this one ever since the AccuForce, since I've had the AccuForce from, for, oh my God, so many years, five plus years, right? The AccuForce. This is my favorite QR. It's very tactile feeling. It feels like you're getting in a real race car and you just put it into place and boom, you're done, right? It's not coming off. You can lift yourself up and do some pull-ups with it if you want to, right? Uh, I really like that QR system is my favorite. Even if I went to say Asetek, I was gonna put that QR system on the Asetek ones because I like it that much. I don't really care for the Asetek QR system that they have. I don't like the uh, SemiCube QR system they have. I still was gonna go with this one, it's just my favorite. It's, it's preferences though, right? So, but I'm really glad to see that they have this QR. Those of course makes it as well. Oh, one note too on this one is this is the upgraded size wise. So the rim, rim piece on here is, is much bigger. I would love to see that they start carrying this over into the other round wheels, uh, like the G GS series or GT1 series that they have, which I want to get in here as well for some rally racing, because that's a lot easier to get a hold of uh, being this big, especially if you got a, a round wheel and you really have to reach down uh, to get it right. So uh, I would love to see that they're upgrading that. I don't think I'll wait that long to get one of those wheels until they upgrade the QR system to the bigger style, but it's nice that they did it here off the bat. All right, as you can see, this is wireless, Bluetooth wireless capabilities. So it, it, it links up with your wheelbase itself. So it's not wired through the, the wheelbase, those little uh, pins that you saw here on this wheelbase, or through the wheel itself, and then the connections here, right here on the wheel, those are just to power up everything. But your actual wireless connection is, is through a window back here to pull in for the Bluetooth, right? And Bluetooth is a one-way connection, right? So you're usually pretty solid with your connection with Bluetooth. However, they have many channels that you can go through on this to select if you have some problems with uh, connection, connection or dropping of signal, which is a little bit weird to me because usually Bluetooth is a very strong signal. That's why you use it. Uh, and it's a one-to-one -one signal. But... They do have that uh, as well. So there you go. All right, so here on the software, what we got going on is, uh, and this is again, you know, carrying on with the first impressions, but with the wheelbase, when you go to the Alpha U, up here at the top, it has channels. I'm on channel 124. Now I did some Reddit looking and, and seeing if people had problems with, with the signal dropping off. And what I was getting for my first first go around is that I was losing signal to the, the Geo, GT, GT Neo wheel itself. And I was like, well, hell, what's going on? And it didn't do it in game. When I was playing the game, it didn't do it. But when I was just sitting here at rest, it would lose the signal. It was uh, interference from all these other Bluetooth things I got going on here in the room. And that's exactly what they said. You're probably interfering with other, other uh, Wi-Fi signals around it and stuff. Uh, so they have a channel changer here. So you can unlock it here and change your channels. And then resync it. And all you do to resync it is to so these two right here, you hold these down uh, for a couple seconds, and it will reconnect and, and run you know, through its lights and stuff. And you reconnect to the newest uh, channel. That's pretty easy. Or you can connect it through the USB device and do the same thing as well. But they have a little tutorial. So that's another plus is they have uh, little videos, YouTube videos, because people don't know how to read nowadays, right? <laughs> I'm just kidding. We all do. But we like to just see something in video, right? Uh, to see how everything rolls and what to expect. So it's nice that they actually did some several YouTube videos to get you kind of going as far as how to operate the system, set it up and all that. But it was very straightforward. Uh, now that goes on to setting it up here. So whenever I set this wheelbase up, I wasn't sure if I was updated to the, to the latest and greatest. Let me turn that channel back off. Uh, there we go. Now we're where I'm at. And let me turn off my Insta360 because it's not important. Here you got the voltage is put now, normal status and factory. You can reset it right here too. And it's showing it's connected. So you just connect it. You see the base is connected. Down here you got, it's in green. So if you go to home, you see when you move your wheel back and forth, it's connected. Same with the uh, Neo. I have no pedals connected. The Q1, the shifter's connected. Now if I use the shifters, 
You see on the GT Neo, it goes B14 for the downshift and it changes from the neutral. Nice thing is, is that's because I have this, this Q1 shifter plug into the CAM bus on the, uh, on the wheelbase, right? So they are in sync. So now in any game that I'm having, it is uh, showing me what gear I'm in on the actual Q1 itself, which is really cool. I like that because this is now changing gears. In this menu, it just shows plus, but everything's linked up as far as it goes with the wheelbase itself. And all it is is turning on this sync with paddles, and that's it. And you can actually invert the display through here, invert the shift detection if you have this installed somewhere in reverse from what it is here. So it's, it's all done through a single hookup. If you get the H pattern shifter, the DX8, which I'm going to have on order here pretty soon, do a review on as well, but because uh, I want to see them all work together, you'll be able to, as long as you have it mapped in game, you'll be able to switch on the fly to, to your sequential shifter and grab some shifts or using your paddles if you want to, or, or just go to the H pattern and start uh, slamming some gears with the H pattern, right? With using the clutch, you turn the clutch on feature on in the game or you turn it off, but anyway. That is a nice ecosystem, and that's what's nice about ecosystems. Now, if you're not totally sold on some Magic products and stuff, I would suggest getting this GT Neo, because if you use the additional hub that they have here, which will turn it into a USB device, which then will activate these two bottom buttons to work for that, when you push in the left funky switch that I have and then rotate the dial, to turn it into a sequential manual numbering, mapping or whatever uh, signal, each one, that one you'll have full connectivity of all four. So that's pretty cool. Uh, but you can also then, of course, use it on any, any wheel that your QR system will go to or do the transfer over to say like SemiQ or, or uh, Isatech or whatever, right? Even Moza, uh, you can connect it straight to a Moza wheel because it's the exact same QR system and plug it in. You can plug it into my AccuForce, the same, same system. Uh, if you have AccuForce, so you could get this wheel, which one of my subscribers talked about there, ordered this wheel for their AccuForce, actually. Uh, so just very universal uh, wheel. So I do love that feature of, the, of this. I hope they upgrade all their existing other wheels with such, uh, such uh, tech, right? Uh, but anyway, I digress. So what else about this? Okay, so continuing on. Uh, with this, what else I, I like as far as first impressions is how easy it is to set up all your all your settings in here. So, for one, you have your home device. This is all the games that are hooked up uh, that it's you know going to. Here you can launch straight to their you know website and check out the rest of their stuff. Here you go to devices. This is of course all your all your devices down here. Your your you know anything that you have plugged in here is recognized. Whether it's in USB plug in straight to your computer or it's or it's in the CAN bus. It'll show up down here. That's Sim Magic. But what's cool is the games. So when you come over to games, you can auto switch this on. So you can turn this on or off. I have it on. Uh, that means it's gonna pull up my settings that I have for a set of Corsa. Now a set of Corsa, this is a default setting for a set of Corsa game. Uh, Cause I haven't actually played that game yet on here, but just using this for example, but you have all these games, right? Now I have AMS2 TJR, that was a you know, custom setting that I liked for in-game. But what it is, is when you come at, come across, let's say you're launching a set of Corsa and you want, you know, a set of Corsa GT3 cards, right? You like, you like those, you have some settings specifically for that uh, within your, uh, your wheelbase settings here, as far as like your smoothing and all this stuff goes on and you like it, you can uh, auto switch this on to where and then select the one that you want. So I can select that one and every time it launches, it'll pull that settings uh, and then you'll, you'll be ready to rock and roll. Right? So pretty cool. Also for the wheel preset here, I have TJR Sim is mine and I set it for every game because I like the colors that I have on this wheel for every game. I like which ones flash flags and which one uh, does uh, TC and, and uh, ABS controls and stuff when it flashes. So you can set that per game. So that's pretty nice. Each game, of course, you can do the same thing. Now each game has different telemetry support. So if you are curious whether you should get an in-dash wheel, uh, right? Uh, so you say like the FX Pro, you could actually just pre-download the software Sim Manager Pro and go look through these games and click on the telemetry tab here and you will see you know, what's working within each game. So that's cool. So a set of courses, you got, for example, ACC, you got uh, RPM, gear, 
throttle, the running laps, best lap, tire fuel, and so on. No DRS, no oil temperature. TC's working, ABS, tire wear is not working, flags are working. And then you've got, of course, on the right here, your laps, your gain, loss, engine mapping, pit limiter, turbo, water, everything here is working on this side here. So you can see everything that's working, right? Uh, so that's important to know if you're going to spend the extra money, say $800, which is actually a pretty dang good deal for an FX Pro with the dash in it. Uh, but you can pre-come and uh, pre pre come along here and and, and see what uh, will or what telemetry works with your favorite games. And show whatever buttons, oops, right here, whatever buttons you assign to do whatever. Like if I click on that, I want this to be traction control because that's the sticker I have on there in that particular spot. It means anytime I'm losing traction, these lights will light up and blink. But if I want this one to do it the same thing and this one do the same thing, I can. I can assign any of these to do whatever. Uh, within the feet telemetry feedback that they have here. So you can leave it off, ABS, direction control, uh, pit, DRS, and flag. So it doesn't have everything, so that would be a con. I, I wish that they would expand this more, uh, uh, more going on here. So uh, yeah, it would be neat. It also, it'd be neat to have multi-function. So right now I have this as pit, but I would like to be able to select it as flags and pit. So I would basically like to select every one of these buttons everything the light up as a when the flag so when i got green flag i want this whole thing blaring at me when i got red flag when i got yellow flag on the track i want i want to instantly be known because i'm so in training and looking at what's ahead of me it would be nice to have all of them flashing now i will say in ms2 the flag setup on there i did notice it and uh, i had a yellow flag in front of me i was coming around the corner barreling through and I got to notice the flags before I even saw what was going on track and that was freaking sweet I was like good lord that's pretty damn immersive I like that I didn't even know I wanted that and then I had, it worked and I was like okay this is really cool uh sorry I don't have the video of that man I wish I was recording at that time because that was a, a pretty nice semi-epic moment right so but yeah uh you can assign all that that's great you got light settings here however you want them to light if you want to change any colors, you can highlight multiple ones, change them all in one spot, or you can just do individually, um, put it back to orange. But if I just want that one right there, blue, I can do blue, right? Uh, I'm sure a lot of y'all have already seen this, but you can choose when it flashes. So in this case, at 92%, it's flashing uh, for me. If I wanted to start flashing at 83%, I just drag it down. Same thing with uh, the brightness here. Uh, you can adjust your brightness on the fly. Blah, blah, blah. You can uh, sync it with the global brightness. You can display, disable, I'm sorry, your flash. So if you, have, if you don't want to flash at all, you can just disable it. So lots of uh, lots of little choices there. Here's the, here's the overall brightness of the whole thing. So the brightness on my wheel goes, goes down and up uh, on the wheel. I don't have my wheel showing right now, but that's it is what it's doing. With these settings and for the price point that you're, that you're using, say, a GT Neo wheel, uh, it's easy to tell the, and the uh, quality and the details, right? So when they have a nice wheel with all these lights and stuff set up, it's really nice, all-encompassing software for all of their products that you would be using, right? That's nice. That, of course, makes you want to obviously buy into the ecosystem to expand on it more. I think typically a lot of people tend to go into one ecosystem and they'll mix and match some things that they like within the ecosystem. But for instance, they'll pick a wheelbase maybe the mini or the alpha or the alpha ultimate like I have, and they'll pick several rims that they like and, uh, and go from there. And then they may like a Husenfeld handbrake or they may like a, a different shifter that they're going to use instead. And they're okay with these other, this other sim racing gear, not necessarily reporting to this because I mean, let's face it, most of these, you don't have your indicators and indication like you do with a sequential shifter, right? This is kind of abnormal, right, in the industry. But it is a nice tweak to use there because now you have this display, right? And you have some extra buttons here to be able to map as well. Uh, but yeah, I think in the heart of it, people are going to use a wheelbase and the same product wheel, but they're going to certainly experiment as they go through and say, put a cube racing wheel on here instead of a GT Neo or, or whatever uh, brand. And it's okay. It works because you plug it in a USB. This is the great joys of doing sim racing on PC. You can interchange products. But with that said, they actually have a really good 
expansive ecosystem from what I, from what I see. And I've been seeing it for quite a while and it's been growing, but it's it's got some really cool features. So I like that. So first first impressions is I'm digging it, right? Another factor I like on here is it's easy to set your force feedback clipping. So when you're in game, and I just released a video showing how to set your, figure out your clipping within each game. This makes it really easy because you can, this software is running all the time. So you can just uh, come over here and start adjusting your, your wheel, how you want the wheel strength to be. So in this case, for Forza here, I got 84% of 23 Newton meters that I'm, that I'm using which makes the wheel gain some, some heft to it, right? A little bit off center, has a little bit of heft to it, just like this friction and stuff does too. Turn the friction off, it's a lot easier to turn. Turn it back on, it, gets, it drags a little bit, right? But you can set all this up in game, get your force feedback to where you're not, not uh, clipping or, or you know, stalling on the wheel just right, and then come over here and adjust the strength if you want, the strength you want in the wheel, as well as how much possible force you want coming coming in. So being that you pick say 23 newton meter wheelbase, you got a lot of headroom. Uh, this is what I discussed too with the Logitech Pro is you don't have a lot of headroom with 11 newton meters of force. It is plenty for a lot of people, but I wouldn't say for all people. And in this case with the 23 newton meters, I'm using 84% of that already. I'm not using all of it, but I got headroom there. And you know, if I have a car that has some horrible force or, or horrible feel in it and i want to feel something more because the programmers of the game didn't do a good job on project cars 2 comes in mind as far as uh, force feedback goes i want to amplify something with that particular car uh, i can do that right uh, i have headroom to do that so that's that's what's nice about having an overpowered wheel that you may not need that much power but you got it on tap when you need it right Okay, one more additional thing I want to talk about is the, the hardware that I got for the, the brackets on this system uh, were pretty decent, man. They're not even decent. They were, they were really good. Uh, let me turn on my camera for that one here. So these brackets here uh, for the wheelbase. Now I'm using the Semi -Q, uh, uh, SimLab, sorry, SimLab's uh, P1X. And there was a couple of holes in here that lined up just perfectly. I couldn't bring it all the way forward, but I, I was able to line up a couple of holes on each side to use this bracket. So I didn't have to uh, pre-drill to use these brackets. So if you're interested and you're using the SimLabs P1X, maybe if you're getting a later and greatest SimLabs um, uh, you know, P1 uh, setup, they might already even have the holes already drilled for here. You could reach out and ask them. But... Uh, I love this, uh, love this setup, zero move, zero flex in the, in the system. Uh, now this will kind of move a little bit as, if I really pull on it, all right? But that's uh, nothing that you could actually feel. It's funny when I see other people do this, they're like, man, this thing doesn't hardly move. And then you'll see it really flexing. <laughs> I'm like, dude, you don't feel that? This is not, you know, I'm, this is not nothing you feel. This is not normal. Uh, to do this. Normally you're, you're like this, right? And that's why everybody explains it like that. Yes, you can move it side to side, but when I'm pulling on just this rim itself and flexing on it, twisting it, it, it doesn't move. I don't hear any creaks or anything in this rim itself. Uh, this is very sturdy. I'm feeling everything come back through the wheel itself. Uh, it's a very, very tactile and sturdy system. It's just very heavy duty uh, to explain it. So but anyway, uh, these brackets are really nice. <laughs> I got, got sidetracked here, but these brackets are nice because I have this deck set to use my, to switch it back and forth to my Logitech Pro. So whenever I want to go racing with uh, GT7, instead of having a second rig, which I may get a second rig later on, but, but for right now, I like to be able to use my motion rig, my D box with the GT7, because why not, right? They have it. And so I can easily just swap these two out put my, G, uh, my Logitech uh, Pro wheel on here, play some GT7, and then switch back to this one without raising and lowering this deck height, right? Because you remember, I got motion, so this thing lifts up. And I only got so much room here. With the Logitech, it comes all the way up. When my motion comes up, it just kisses the bottom of this. So, uh, I, can, I don't have to mess with these adjustments. So I like that. That's the reason why I got this bracket, so I can adjust this level, uh, angle of it, to be perfect for the way I'm driving, right? So if you're considering it, you know, it's a little extra money for the brackets, but they look pretty dang cool and they're highly adjustable. Okay, so 
One more thing I want to cover here before I get into how this wheel actually feels, which by the way, it feels great. Uh, the, the wheelbase itself, they have some presettings on here for each game. So if you just come to this device here, Sim Manager Pro, and I'll do a separate video covering what each one of these do as well. But I will say off the bat, if you were to come over here and say, I have a fours in this case, I was playing it last night because uh, I had a new update with it. Fours in Motorsport TJR, that just makes me know that that's you know, my settings. But you can save these to the cloud so I can, uh, I can hit save here and I can pick what categories I want it to be in. So I just want this on Forza. I wouldn't want to pull it on any of these other games. Uh, and hit save and then boom, you're done. You're saved uh, to your, to these settings to your wheelbase, right? Or to the software rather. Uh, but you can also uh, share them as well. This code, uh, use this code and other sim managers. So you can export this file, go to your friend's house or send it to your friend or whatever and have them check out your system or your settings. That's pretty cool actually. It's pretty fast to do uh, in that case. And then also um, I, what I would like as far as improvements go is that it would be more like SimiCube uh, to where you can just share it to the community. ActiForce actually used to have that as well and then they took that away after some years. Uh, and to be honest, it was okay because a lot of the stuff out there was trash. But And maybe some of that is, is trash on SimiCube. I don't know. I haven't bought one to test yet, uh, but maybe I will in the future. But uh, yeah, the, it would be nice to be able to upload it to, a, to, a, uh, to a, a system that everybody can share and they have a smart system to upgrade. Not just, here's my file because I'm Track Junkie Racing. This is for Forza. Check it out. No, it should be a card that you fill out that at least expresses what, in some detail, what's in there. What is it tuned for? Is it tuned for LMP cars? Is it tuned for GT3 cars? What is it tuned for? Road cars. So there should be a, a, a field, a field, out, uh, you know, a, a field that you would use to uh, fill out some criteria before you could actually submit it. And that will eliminate all these double uh, you know, these, uh, just a lot of trash out there, right? There's at least some forethought put in, in effect. So I would love to see that get implemented in something, uh, with Sim, Sim Pro manager. I mean, it seems like some magic is here to stay. So I, I think it would be nice to evolve it. Sorry about that. My dog was screaming because the uh, family came home. <laughs> I was ear piercing loud. I don't know if it came across the camera, but good Lordy. All right. So uh, but yeah, I would love to see some uh, program uh, like that put in. So, But however, if you're just getting started, you're just new to sim racing, the settings they have here are not bad, uh, but they're not great either at, at the same point. So if I come up here, I click on my TJR sim, this little down arrow, right? You see, uh, you come up to the top here. Part of my face is hiding that. Let me move that out of the way. Um, do that again. Come up here to the top where it says Sim Magic. Uh, fine tune presets, click on that. And here's all your presets that it has for all the games uh, that it's pre-programmed in, right? So if I want to go back to, let's say I'm messing with uh, uh, ACC, I click on ACC, it loads all the presettings for ACC, right? And if I like these settings, I can save it as something else, name it to something that I would know that it's personally to me, right? And then uh, go with it, right? So maybe I have ACC, uh, GT4 cars, you know, I got a great setting for that. This is what I like. Then I have another one, ACC GT3 cars and so on. You get it, uh, but you can change it. But what comes default is pretty good. You'll notice the 23 Newton meters is, is telling you to basically allow all of the possible force from the wheel, which I'd suggest you keep it the same. And then your percentage of uh, force feedback, which is 70% of 23 Newton meters. And then they, they pretty much always put some smoothness in there, which takes out the highs. Uh, high frequencies and, and turn them uh, and smooths out the peaks of them. And then your rotational speed. I noticed they love turning the rotational speed quite down, uh, like 25, 35, and so on is what I see uh, in, in these games. And really, I think they do that for a safety feature because when you're having a yank on this on this wheel here, um, I mean, when you're, when you're getting high forces and this, this wheel is quite fast. So if you got it on hundred percent, it can, it can spin around on you pretty dang fast. And so I think they just do that out of, out of just safety. 
to to not spin and get people hurt because you can you can uh, get pretty hurt with these higher powerful wheels. Even a two ten newton meter base wheel, you can get hurt, especially if you get your fingers caught in here and it's ripping like this and you're not expecting it. Uh, I mean, best thing of course to do is pull your hands away, but you know it can happen. So uh, and they also like to have a lot of damper in there. I'm not big on damper. I do like mechanical friction because I like feel a little bit of a friction like you would in a real car uh, almost simulating the tires getting scrubbed move back and forth uh so i do like that inertia i usually don't use feedback frequency i'll explain all this stuff in detail uh when i get into the software so stay tuned i'll, I'll go over the whole software in detail but mainly just to take the way is it's okay to start with their settings i would pick their settings per game and say dirt rally 2 it comes in and here's giving me an unsafe because I messed with some of these dolls. I'll discard it because I don't want to save it as something. Uh, I think actually whatever you you uh, do with it, if you hit save, it saves over the original file. And uh, I think you would have to re you click this revert button right here. I haven't tried it, but uh, if you click this revert button, it should go back to the original uh, file. So, um, but anyway, Dirt Rally 2, here's the settings for that as well. So. Um, Start there and then start tweaking to your likeness, right? And uh, check out my how to know about your, uh, you know, when to switch up to new uh, higher Newton wheelbase uh, video I just sent out. Uh, it'll also explain to you how to know not only when you need a new wheelbase, but figure out your clipping to get the most feel out of your base, no matter what how powerful your wheelbase is. Uh, to get the most most feedback from in the game given to you, and then your base not being uh, maybe underpowered or overpowered, but get the correct feel out of it. So check that video out. But anyway, uh, that's it on the software uh, and everything else for first impressions. Alrighty, so lastly, just to cover in the experience of the of the Sim Magic ecosystem, it, it's stellar. How does this wheel actually feel? That's really what a lot of people want to know, but there's more to just, it feels good. Why does it feel good? Uh, what do I feel in here? I'll put all that latest and greatest in my review, right, of, of how it feels. But initial impressions, doing some settings here for, actually it's been two weeks that I've had this, doing some settings on here to what I like. I can get a very high tactile feeling of the road surfaces. Uh, the resolution is, is really good coming through the wheel. And I can get a nice rubber feeling, a nice pneumatic feeling, like I have tires on the road feeling. And that's really what I'm looking for. I don't necessarily care that I have the highest force feed feedback wheelbase. Obviously, I picked 23 Newton meters, not because of ego, but because I'm already used to with the AccuForce 13 Newton meters and then peaks up to 16. So I was already used to what a 16 Newton meters. This is going to peak to 23. It's run. I don't know what its run is, but it would probably be safe to say that it's anywhere from 18 up, right? But really, it depends on how much the game's delivering to you at the time, because you don't need all of that force feedback. You wouldn't need a slight rumble to be 23 newton meters and rip your arms off, right? It's whatever the game's producing. But you have the power with something like this to up those levels as much as, as you possibly can based off the code that's getting delivered to you. And that's where you get the headroom with a higher newton meter base. And the, uh, the resolution that I get on here, it, it's night and day difference from the AccuForce. So the AccuForce has a motor update of 50,000 times per second. If you compare this one, this is putting out 263,144 pp per, per resolution. Now, if you go look at the Asetech and the uh, SemiCube, they blow this away on paper. Uh, much, much more. I don't have the data here to look at real quick, but much, much more. Now, the, the Logitech Pro, they don't produce any information on how much it puts out. I, I certainly feel that it puts out more than my uh, AccuForce wheel does because it, it's a little bit cleaner feeling through there. Taking the true force out of the factor, right? Because that's a little additional noise factor uh, of a transducer effect in there. But uh, taking that out, it feels really good. It's just not as forceful when it kicks in as my AccuForce was with 13 as a base newton meters compared to 11 on the Pro. But it did that, really good. It definitely has a cleaner cleaner uh, resolution coming through, right? So it's more encoded resolution coming to you than say the AccuForce was. This one, of course, steps it up way above that one. I would love to see what the Logitech was. They don't produce that information for anybody, but 
this one definitely is a, a, a pretty pretty decent step up from that one. Plus you have the whole wide ecosystem of all the different wheels and pedals and shifters and all pro level stuff, right? Uh, so as far as feel goes, I have a very pneumatic tire feeling when I'm going across the surface. Uh, and I probably have some B-roll fault showing here of the video of, of me playing around on track, but it feels good. Uh, the fact that I have these, these switches that has all the buttons I really need on here, actually a little bit more than I need. I love the, the actual uh, clutch buttons. I don't use them for clutches, but I use them as actual buttons, which I love because I have ran out of a couple on here that I didn't want to rechange because it's labeled a certain thing. Uh, and I would just use these on the fly, right? So something like center VR or something like that, right? You could just use your left left stick for a left paddle here, clutch paddle for center VR, something easy like that. Because uh, I don't have a button box no more up here like I did with the Aggie Force. But anyway, uh, form, fit, and function, perfect. The way it feels is is definitely evolved from the, uh, from the previous guys uh, that I mentioned. So all in all, it's a really good wheel. Uh, I'm not gonna ready to give you my review yet i'll give that to you here in probably a couple more weeks after some more testing some longevity of this a little bit and, and be more of a fair review of it but it'll of course cover what we're talking about here and uh, maybe dig in a little bit deeper as well and more actual video of it in action which is really what people want to know how the heck does it feel in certain games and so anyway uh and then i'll go over in my review needs improvements where i think it needs improvements as well uh as that goes too Stay tuned for the next video uh, coming up here on, on this product line. And uh, hopefully if you, uh, any of the things that I say, drop some comments of what you feel uh, you, you have with your magic equipment, whether you like it or don't, or our finances, you know, everybody in the community can learn from each other. So leave your information and your experience uh, down below in the chat. So with that said, I'm out. Bye.